Leandro Trossard is about to sign a new contract at Arsenal, but Kyle Saka faces a race against time to play against Nottingham Forest, and we've been linked with Real Madrid's Brahim Diaz. Now, whether you believe anything I've just said is neither here nor there. In fact, it is smash the like button and let me know your thoughts, people, as we gear back to the Premier League restart. And as we approach January, a silly season, we've been linked with hella players. We'd win the Premier League with half the Kudus's and all these guys we've been linked with. But if I share my screen, let's get into it, people. Now, now, apparently, why Arsenal will hand Leandro Trossard a new deal despite sharpshooters' costly errors this season? Now, I can't lie. I think these things are harsh, you know. People demonise Trossard for his back pass against Saliba. For, uh, well, that put Saliba in hot water against Bournemouth. You know, the red card against Man City. One does wonder at the time we went ahead that the Etihad had and we had 11 on, men on the pitch, what would have happened? And these things do play a part. But at the same time, I do think people are very harsh to the guy because if you isolate these moments in the games he has let us down, have we done enough as a team? Probably not. You know, everybody used to love this guy and say he needs to play and this, that and the other. And they killed me when I said he was overrated. And what I meant by overrated is that he's in the great role of being the next man off the bench. He's down on his luck. You don't become a good player or a bad player overnight. That being said, though, when he was in form, we did hear last year he potentially would sign a new deal. He equally is always linked with moves to Saudi. Him being 29 years of age may be able to get some real value. That could be something to consider. But I think at the very least, Trossard's a very good squad player. Let's try and skip through the, to the Tosh people. As I said, we know he's been a bit of a villain. You know, he did do his thing against Aston Villa where he cut, uh, you know, refused to celebrate, which I don't mind. He wants to play. But you look at the City games, the missed penalty in the Champions League, general performances, the games I said before, and he has been down on his luck, people. Scrolling all the way down, Trossard is not the type of player who will register a bulging goals or assist tally as seen by seven goals and one assist in his first 31 league games of last season that's true but when he joined us in that January period he did end the season with 12 assists last season he did get double figures so I do think he's a calm squad player but he has much like the vast majority of our players been very underwhelming people and it just shows how quickly things can turn for you we all know he's a good player Get into why he's going to get a contract, people. Apparently, he has the lowest shot conversion rate, 10% and expected goal ratio per 90 among Arsenal's attackers. Boy, that don't look good, trust up. But yeah, man, we're going to need every player we've got. I am trying to find where it's talking about exactly him just getting a new contract, people. Where is it? Um... Well, it's not even really here, people. But there's been rumours he's going to get a new deal. I don't know how long. You'd imagine it's two years with an option of another. Some rumours actually say it's a significant increase in wages. Naturally, I know people would say, oh, why is he getting a new deal, et cetera, et cetera. I understand it, but it does protect if he is to leave his potential resale value. And we've got a lot of other problems, people. Admittedly, one love to you, Trossard, but I would rather hear Saka Saliba the both Gabriels um, have signed new deals. Um, I can't exactly see it in that article, but yeah, Sammy Mokbell, who wrote the article we just saw, apparently said, Arsenal in talks with Leandro Trossard over a new contract with a significant pay increase as a reward for his impact since joining. Trossard's current deal is 90k a week, but his new wages will surge into six figures if an agreement can be reached. So, he might double it, which I doubt, but it might get into the 100k, 110, 130k, which signing a new deal, it's like in the nine to five. Maybe some of you, but I'm pretty sure definitely in this current climate where inflation's on the floor, housing prices is going up, none of you are going to sign a new deal at your current employers or join a new club if you're going to get paid less or the same wages. You want to get paid more. You could caveat that with saying, depending on the length of the contract, could you have another player on big wages that could potentially be sold? And when you look through our squad for a variety of different reasons, whether it's injuries and, and, and not quite doing what they did when they first signed for the club, like Tommy Ash, to Gabriel Jesus Inchenko, to potentially Tini a bit different, but Tini, or you look at the Jorginho's and the Thomas Partey's, or you look at the Kivio's and at, at Trossard, there's a couple of players you go through our squad. You can make a case of them being moved on between January to summer, although 
I'd be more open to that kind of stuff in the summer. And that being said, it's not FIFA. You're not going to see seven, eight, nine players leaving, seven, eight, nine come in, and then we're going to have to wait for everybody to bed in. But yeah, let me know your thoughts where Trossard's concerned. Some of you, admittedly, at this current climate, are probably onto him. Zinchenko is all Zinchenko, like Kivio, Tommy Asu, half of these players that are not main players at the moment, it's easy to link them with moves away. But he is drawing interest, allegedly, people. He's reportedly emerging as a transfer target for Inter Milan. Boy, if they buy you, boy, you, you, boy, you got to count your lucky stars if you end up at a big club again, Zinchenko. Because me, I think you got to take a step down. We all know he's behind the, the behind the likes of, I reckon, Timbar, Calafuri, um, and potentially a couple of others where we're concerned at first team level. Um, the 27-year-old has two years left on his deal. Haven't heard anything. Maybe that's a bit of a clue, really, as to where he's going. Does it make sense to sell him in January? Some of you would say yes. Some of you would say no, which is why I'd love to know your thoughts. Gar uh, sorry. Bukayo Saka faces a race against time to get himself fit for Arsenal's Premier League top four showdown against Nottingham Forest on Saturday, according to reports. Forest are in great form, got a number of good players, you know, ex-Chelsea boy Hudson Adoy, ex-Spurs manager on paper. It's a, it's, it, it should still, well, we're probably still the favourites on paper, but on paper, they're probably the favourites. That being said, we need to stop the route. Purely nothing against Nottingham Forest and their quality players, you know, Chris Wood will be a problem. Just because they got a former Spurs man, I'm not going to lie to you. No wins in four is, is, is horrible. Nine, no wins in five is terrible. And we can't be losing to someone connected to Spurs and indirectly Chelsea. Now, I'm not sure if Saka is or isn't going to be available. Evidently, he's got injuries. I only say that because Mikel Arteta, he plays a dangerous game. You saw Zinchenko chat about how he tells injured players get on the team bus. Sometimes Mikel Arteta will make you believe a player is going to play on the weekend and they don't. Sometimes he makes you believe there's no chance they're going to be there and he is. I'd imagine they'll give Bukayo Saka every moment to prove his fitness. And for me, I think they know if he's going to be there or not. On current form, we need to play our best players and take nothing away from Nottingham Forest. But if Saka isn't there... I am scared, but if we cannot get a performance without Bakayo Saka, then boy, you have to wonder what we're doing, people. Um, we all know he's struggling with a leg injury. You know, he suffered that against Chelsea. He was ruled out of the England games against Greece and the Republic of Ireland. Not heard nothing about Declan Rice. We know Benjamin White's 2024 is probably over, people. Apparently, it's still a question mark. Now, I hope Bakayo Saka is a bit of mind games. Obviously, tomorrow we'll go over Mikel Arteta's press conference where... He will at least speak. I say at least speak. I don't know if he'll shed any light on the number of players that were missing. Pardon me, that were missing. Even Tommy and Calafuri, they're going to be back because we're going to need the, the one, two little fullbacks we can get. We're going to need them because there's no Benjamin White. I see Tierney in training. I don't know if he's ready to play, but from now till January, we've got a condensed fixture calendar list. So we're going to need things. Forrest currently sit fifth in the Premier League table, level on points with Arsenal and only behind us on goal difference, people. So it is a big game for us, people, if I'm completely honest with you. So that's where Saka's concerned. Now, again, as we approach the January, period we've been linked with Turkey we've been linked with Arda Galer which you know owing to Leon's financial issues and Arda Galer not playing it's easy to link us with players if we could get Diaz I'm all for that I'll never forget when Manchester City welcomed well traveled to the Emirates and played Arsenal's under 21s Sky played us off the park quality player played for a number of big clubs can play all across the front three well just before the striker I would, I would have him at the carpet tomorrow. I don't buy it because I just feel it's easy to link us with wingers. It's easy to link us with players that are not getting football. I don't know what Real Madrid are going to ask for. And, you know, the Diaz's, the Ceballos's, those kind of players that are on the peripheral things at Real Madrid doesn't look like they're in any hurry to leave. But TBR Football understands that Arsenal are actively keeping tabs on Brian Diaz's situation with concern growing within the players' camp that he may have to leave Real Madrid for more regular minutes. I mean, when you're competing against... The Vinicius, the Mbappes, the Rodrigo's, and I can't, it's such, such is the quality. I can't remember half the guys they've got. Even Valverde doing this hybrid right wing centre mid row. There's levels, really. But I don't think Real Madrid will force him out. If they need to raise capital, which I don't think Real Madrid need to do, then potentially. Keeping up the theme with Real Madrid and indirectly Arsenal, as you lot know, we've been linked with Arda Galer in the last few days. As with Arda Galer, Real Madrid are currently stating that Diaz is not available, but there's belief that their stance is on both players' 
could change in the coming weeks ahead of the January window, especially if the chances of potential loans arise. I mean, both players would have to make clear that they want to leave and there'd have to be a change of heart from probably Carlo Ancelotti and obviously the decision makers at Real Madrid, the Florentino Perez's and people of that ilk. Jorginho is still linked with Besiktas. Apparently, he's very close to joining them, according to reports in Turkey. Another one who probably is going to leave Arsenal at the end of the season. Does it make sense to let him go now, where we do look a bit lightweight in midfield, you know? Part is a, an option, a consistent option for right back. And I don't want to, you know, touch wood, pause. I don't want to jinx anything. But with this injury crisis we went through, Partey being fit is a madness, but probably because he's the last year of his deal. But you're never quite confident Partey is going to be fit for the whole season. Obviously, Declan Rice has a broken toe. Mikel Marino is still adapting and adjusting to life here and has had injury issues of his own. Martin Odegaard barely gets injured. He has got injured this campaign. So when you start to look around our central midfield, it is a bit lightweight and I'm not saying we should have kept him, but such a, you know, when injuries happen and you have mad thoughts, I was even thinking, and I know it's wrong, people shout El Nene, but I was like, raw could do with a little El Nene in the squad just to make us a bit more comfortable, if I'm honest. Uh, apparently, Arsenal, the latest team to be linked with RB Leipzig defender Castiello Lukeba, I think his name is, not Lukeba. He's played in, he's a French under-21 international. Took a bit of a while to go, but he's doing quite well at Leipzig and probably will join the Opomacanos, the Canates of being sold for a substantial profit. Been linked with a bunch of clubs, 90 million release clause. Let's just assume it's 50, 60 million. It's a bit like when we're linked with Hato and, and Diamande, are we really going to sign them kind of centre-backs where they know they're not playing ahead of Saliba or Gabriel? Of course, across the season, there's options. He can actually play left-back as well. But yeah, man, we've been linked with him. Unless Saliba was to leave, which God forbid, I hope not, then that's the only thing. But, you know, Lukeba, forgive me if I'm wrong, is left-footed. And even if he's not, if he's not left-footed, he's pretty good with that. Saliba's obviously a right-footer. I'm tired of hearing about Nico Williams personally, people, but allegedly Barcelona's financial problems could block the deal. Um, apparently, you know, this article said, well, that's a part of sports management to take care of. If a player who is of interest up to you, then he does not want to move. You do not have much margin either. You can't do a lot of things either. I don't know so much details, but it's hard for me to believe that if you're going to sign Nico Williams, you weren't going to be able to register him. Barca were not going to pay 50, 60 million for a player if they're not going to be able to play him. That's true. And then you look at his wages. Maybe Barcelona's precarious financial situation could be a spring in Arsenal step. And ahead of the summer 2020, campaign you would imagine Arsenal Chelsea Barcelona are still going to get linked with him you never know a year can change but you're not on joining Arsenal so let's forget that um what's this article said people you know you look at our income it's going up and I, I wish I had the statistics to hand people but um apparently Arsenal's contributed an obscene amount of, of GDP in this country people which shows why we want to increase the capacity at the Emirates and maybe make some stadium revamps people but in relation to them revamps like I said Luke Bar, Trust Arts New Deal Bakayo Saka Briam Diaz that's all I've got to speak about today if there's any other news you know there's watch alongs and live streams please do drop a comment and let me know your thoughts subscribe if you have have it smash the like button let's get a bit of motion one love for you lot watching the ads people and on that note peace